It took ancient explorers thousands of years to be able to produce detailed maps of just our continents. Now every year we carry on making progress by leaps and bounds and challenge the universe by discovering new horizons. 5,924 spacecraft have been launched from the Earth in the past 60 years. Many of them were not to fulfill their missions and the connection with them was lost. Meanwhile, others revealed things man hadn't been able to observe for millions of years. In 1986, NASA's spacecraft Voyager 2 went as far as Uranus. And today, I'm going to tell you what it managed to observe in the short time it took to pass one of the remotest planets in the solar system. Voyager 2 would never have made any of its discoveries had it not been for something that happened in the 1960s that was to revolutionize our today's perception of celestial bodies. In 1964, when Gary Flandreau, then an intern at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, started drawing graphs of planets' future positions, he soon found that all the planets beyond the asteroid belt were going to align in a very narrow sector of the sky in the late 1970s. In our system, this phenomenon occurs once every 175 years. And this was a unique opportunity. By performing gravity boost maneuvers, a spacecraft would be able to whiz from one planet to another, thus exploring them all. It would also reduce the time of the flight, which would greatly boost chances of success. However, due to potentially high costs, this ambitious project had to be rejected. That's why NASA came up with something different. In 1977, a cheaper project was planned, namely Mariner Jupiter Saturn 77. Even though the two probes were intended to explore exclusively Jupiter and Saturn, the scientists in charge of their development designed the probes in a way for them to be ready for a prolonged journey. The first probe's trajectory allowed it to additionally pass Titan, one of Saturn's moons with its own atmosphere. As for the second spacecraft, it was able to fly by Uranus and Neptune. Half a year before the planned launch, it was decided to change the project's name. Thus, the Voyagers made their appearance in the history of space discoveries. Running ahead, it should be mentioned that in their long history, the Voyagers have discovered a number of phenomena whose existence was to be confirmed only many years later. Jupiter's tumultuous atmosphere, Saturn's changeable rings and Neptune's dark spot. All these discoveries were made possible thanks to the ambitious experiment NASA's scientists ventured to carry out. Nine years after its launch, Voyager 2 became the only spacecraft to ever reach Uranus. In order to boost up its connection with the Earth, a 64-meter DSN antenna and two 24-meter antennas were arrayed back on our planet. The spacecraft's cameras were supposed to be able to beam back several thousand pictures. Things we already knew about Uranus before the Voyager's approach, its rotation angle, nine rings and five of its satellites, the information scrupulously gleaned for hundreds of years by the most prominent minds of our planet, comprised a tiny portion of the information that has been made available today thanks to that single swift flyby. On the 7th of June 1985, the first navigation pictures of Uranus system were taken, but it was not until November the 6th that the camera moved on to taking more detailed images. It is quite extraordinary that the magnetometers kept silent in November, December and even the first half of January. At the same time, the Earth radiation meter quietened down only after the orbit of Mars while Jupiter's radio emissions persisted from the very day of the launch. Michael Kaiser from the Goddard Space Flight Center prophetically remarked, It's either that we've encountered a planet without a magnetic field, or else it's so bizarre that we don't know what to look for. Thanks to the Voyager's investigations, it is now known that Uranus's magnetic field has some features due to its peculiar rotation. The peculiarity lies in the fact that the magnetic dipole does not coincide with the planet's rotation axis. It is in fact displaced by one-third of its radius relating to its center. Besides, the magnetic axis is tilted with respect to the rotation axis at an angle of 60 degrees. 
Uranus's magnetosphere doesn't look like a wide stripe, but is rather lopsided due to the strong tilt of the rotation axis to the magnetic axis. On the 27th of December 1985, Uranus's latitudinal zones were clearly visible in the transmitted images, dark brown at the poles and light at the equator. On the same day, thanks to the snapshots, Stephen Sinnott was able to confirm the discovery of Uranus's first unknown satellite, 1985U1. It was traditionally dubbed after a character from a play by William Shakespeare, 15 Puck. In the following several days, Voyager 2 carried on taking pictures of the moons, among them already known Titania, Oberon, Ariel, Umbriel and Miranda. However, their number grew threefold thanks to the pictures. On the 16th of January 1986, the Voyager 2 project team announced the discovery of six more moons with the help of the photos. The largest objects, 1986 U1 and U2, were discovered in the photos examined on January the 3rd. U3 was discovered on January the 9th and U4, U5 and U6 were registered on the 13th of January. The temporary designations of Uranus's satellites were substituted by these up-to-date names. 12 Portia, 11 Juliet, 9 Cressida, 13 Rosalind, 14 Belinda and 10 Desdemona. In the images of January the 20th, some details of the relief on the surface of Oberon, Titania and Dariel were distinguishable and two more satellites were discovered on that day, U7 and U8, 6 Cordelia and 7 Ophelia. On January the 22nd, Voyager 2 set off on its first flyby program V751. In addition to taking regular snapshots of the moons, it captured the patchwork of the Uranian rings and Umbriel in color. In one of the images taken on the following day, Bradford Smith found one more satellite, 1986 U9. It was later dubbed 8 Bianca. Miranda, or rather its peculiar terrain, was a discovery that amazed NASA's astrophysicists. It was possible to distinguish it thanks to the Voyager's pictures. The outer layer of Miranda's crust is covered with crevices, dales, cliffs and ravines which together form a hybrid of geological features from different worlds. According to explorers' estimates, at least 10 types of terrain find themselves on a celestial body of a measly 500 kilometers in diameter. After that, it was time to discover Uranian rings. When Voyager 2 was passing through the planet's rings plane, a great multitude of dusty particles were observed 115,000 kilometers away from the planet's core and 60,000 kilometers away from the outer ring Epsilon. It looked like a diffuse nebula 4,000 kilometers thick. Thus, two new Uranian rings were discovered by Voyager 2. The first ring was located between the Delta and Epsilon ones and was given the temporary designation 1986U1R. In direct sunlight, it looked very narrow, just about 1 or 2 kilometers, and faint, and only by using ultraviolet detectors were astronomers able to observe it. Later, Uranus's tenth ring was seen in the images. This picture shows all of them, from the bright Epsilon ring to the faint line of the sixth ring. The existence of the second ring discovered by Voyager 2, dubbed 1986U2R, was confirmed only in 2004. It was located 39,500 kilometers away from the planet's core, and within 20 years it had migrated beyond, now finding itself within the distance of up to 41,350 kilometers away from the core. Before bidding farewell to Uranus and faring onward towards new horizons, Voyager 2 took its last snapshot of the planet. At the moment when this picture was taken, the probe was already a million kilometers away and was making for yet another mystery of the solar system, Neptune. This encounter would herald a major scientific breakthrough. At the same time, billions of kilometers away, thousands of people held their breath in anticipation of yet another step into the unknown.